Hello, in this video we will talk about complementary events, basically events that are opposites of one another. The complement of an event A is denoted by A prime or A bar. Once again, that's A prime or A bar. That's the notation for the complement of an event A. It consists of all outcomes that are in the sample space but are not in the given event A. An event and its complement cannot occur at the same time. That's the golden rule. A six-sided die is rolled. <clears throat> when I roll a six-sided die, what would my sample space be? What are all of my possible outcomes? Well, anything from one to six for a six-sided die one through six so what is the probability of rolling a three so the probability of rolling a three is equal to how many possible outcomes are there how many items are there in my sample space six out of those six how many are three just one so the probability is 1 out of 6. <clears throat> now what is the probability of not rolling a 3? Well the probability of not rolling a 3 is out of the 6 outcomes how many are not 3? There's 5 of them. 1, 2, 4, 5, and 6. 5 outcomes. So the probability of not rolling a 3 is 5 out of 6. <clears throat> so one thing I want to note before moving to the next slide is that notice the probability of rolling a 3 plus the probability of not rolling a 3 is equal to 1. <clears throat> so notice that the probability of rolling a 3 plus not rolling a 3 is equal to 1. If I was to rearrange this a little bit, remember that was 1 out of 6, plus 5 out of 6 is equal to 1. If I was to rearrange this expression and isolate the probability of not rolling a 3, <coughs> I would take away the probability of rolling a 3 on both sides of the expression, or the equation I should say. Notice what's going to happen you're left with the probability of not rolling a 3 is equal to 1 minus the probability of rolling a 3. <laughs> so that means probability of not rolling a 3 is equal to 1 minus 1 out of 6 or 5 out of 6, exactly what we found on the previous slide. And then similarly, by rearranging, we can calculate the probability of rolling a 3 by doing 1 minus the probability of not rolling a 3. So 1 minus 5 over 6, which equals 1 over 6. And that's all because rolling a 3 and not rolling a 3, the probabilities add up to 1. <coughs> so what the complement rule is telling you is because an event and its complement is are equal to 1. If you want to find the probability of event A not occurring, it's 1 minus the exact opposite happening. It's 1 minus the probability of A occurring. If you want to find the probability of A occurring, it's 1 minus its opposite occurring. So the probability of something is 1 minus its opposite. 1 minus its opposite. 1 minus its opposite's probability. That's the golden rule. That's what the complement rule is telling you. <clears throat> so if you look at a Venn diagram for the complement of event A, if my rectangle, which is enclosed and filled with red, if that represents my entire sample space, and if my inner circle represents A, it's this red space on the outside that represents the opposite of A everything that is not in circle A but is still in the sample space. That's my A bar. 
So in our first complimentary event example, I have a recent survey of 1,065 students where 192 admitted to skipping a class within the past year for no reason. So this is an example we did when we did learned about basic probabilities. We're now going to put a little bit of a twist on it. <clears throat> so we're going to calculate the probability a student skips class. That's what we're looking at, the outcome, the student skips class. <clears throat> so probability student skips class is equal to out of 1065 students how many skip class or admitted to it anyway that's 192 <laughs> which is equal to point to four decimal places point one eight zero three <clears throat> now let's calculate the probability a student does not skip class this we'll use the complement rule for so the probability a student does not skip class. The probability a student does not skip class is equal to 1 minus the probability a student does skip class. Or 1 minus 0 0.1803, which is going to equal 0.81. Nine, seven. So those are my two probabilities here. My answer in A, I used it to find my answer for part B. You're like, well, the complement rule doesn't really save us much time. We easily could have taken 1065 and subtracted 192 to be able to get my numerator for students that do not skip class. Well, you're going to learn in a minute that the complement rule is highly beneficial to you. So, to show this to you, we have the probability of at least one. The probability of at least one is finding the probability that among several trials, we get at least one of some specified event. So maybe you flip a coin and you want to find the probability you get at least one heads or you get at least one tails. You flip a coin a hundred times, you want at least one occurrence of heads or at least one occurrence of tails. Well, at least one translates to one or more. So the complement of getting at least one item is to say you get no items. Those are the complements of each other. One or more or at least one, the complement is none, no, zero. <clears throat> because they're complements, the probability of at least one plus the probability of none is equal to one. Rearranging this, I have this great formula I can use now. The probability of at least one is equal to 1 minus the probability of none. So the probability of getting at least one heads when you flip a coin a hundred times is equal to 1 minus the probability of getting no heads when you flip a coin a hundred times. <clears throat> Let's use this rule. A company supplies DVDs in lots of 48 and they have a reported defect rate of 0.5 percent. So that means the probability a disc is defective, defective now is 0.005. It follows that the probability of a disk being good is 0.995. <clears throat> what is the probability of getting at least one, there's that keyword, at least one, defective disk in a lot of 48? <clears throat> so the probability we have at least one defective out of the 48 is equal to 1 minus the probability that none are defective of the 48. So I need to work a little bit here, finding the probability that none are defective of the 48. <clears throat> All right. So what's going to happen here is I need to calculate the probability that none of the 48 are defective. Off to the side here. Well, that means finding the probability that all of the 48 are good. That they have no issue. That means you take your first DVD. 
What's the probability that first DVD will be good? Well, the probability of a single disc being good is 0.995. What about your second disc? Also 0.995. And you continue to do that until you get through all 48 discs. So what is 0.995 to the 48th power? That's what we want to calculate here. 0.995 to the 48th power. Well, that's 0.7862. So the probability that at least one disk is defective is 1 minus the probability that none are defective. So that's 1 minus 0.7862, which is equal to 0.2138. That's the probability that at least one disk will be defective. There's about a 21 percent chance that at least one of the discs will be defective in a lot of 48. So once again we use the complement rule. We said if we have at least one it means that the probability, the calculation one will be one minus the probability of none. To find the probability that none of the 48 are defective it's like saying what's the probability all of the 48 are good. Which means we multiply the probability of a single disc being good with itself 48 times. So. 48 times. And so we calculated was 0.995 to the 48th power. It's 0.7862. We did 1 minus 0.7862 to get 0.2138. <clears throat> so what is the probability there will be at least one girl if a couple wants to have four children? Assume boys and girls are equally likely. <clears throat> so we have probability of at least one girl. That's what we're trying to calculate. So that will be, think about what that is, 1 minus the exact opposite happening. <clears throat> 1 minus the probability of no girls. Out of the four children, no girls. No girls is the same thing as saying all boys. So the probability of all boys is equal to, well, <clears throat> when you have four children, there's two times two times two times two possibilities, or 16 possible outcomes. That's because child one, you can have either a boy or girl. That's two outcomes there. Child two, boy or girl. Child three, boy or girl. Child four, boy or girl. 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 gives you 16. So the probability of getting all boys out of those 16 outcomes, how many are all boys? Well, without listing them, you should know that the only one is when you get four boys right in a row. But the probability of at least one girl is 1 minus the probability of getting all boys, 1 minus 1 over 16. And 1 minus 1 over 16 actually will give you 15 over 16. And as a decimal, that will be 0.9375. So that's using the complement rule for this question. The only other way to do this question would be to write out all 16 possible outcomes of the four children and to look at how many have at least one girl. But to me, it's much easier to use the complement rule here. That's my opinion. Well, anyway, I hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching.